Alright folks, I washed, just washed my eggshells. I'm fixing to bake them. Then I'm going to grind them up into calcium powder. But, you need to wash them. Then they need to be good and dry. And that's, that's the reason for the baking. Get them good and hot and dry. And it makes them more brittle and crumbly when you put them in the blender. All right. Got the oven ready. I'm gonna bake them things for about 30 minutes. I've got it set at 400 degrees. All right, set my timer for 30. Thirty minutes. Start. Oh. Start putting these shells in this. This tray is hot. They're hot. I could wait till it gets cool, but I just want to get this done. All right, let me. Grind that down a little bit. Just kind of so okay. Now Suffers up. Okay. Put it on love. Now 
now that's ground up. You could use it like that, but I want it finer than that. just getting pulverized pretty good so I'm gonna do one more shot all right that looks actually the blender I had did a better job but that's fine enough for me because i'm not going to be like taking it internally or anything i'll be just using it on my plants and stuff all right pour out this tray here see how good a i'm gonna do it one more while. Still not as fine as I'd like, but it will do the trick. This processor is not doing it as fine as I'd like. Okay, that's kind of like a coarse sand. I really like mine. I really like mine almost like a powder. But that will do. That will get the calcium, especially on them tomatoes. I want to. I would sure like to have. Enough eggshells to make about a gallon of this stuff. But anyway, I'll be pouring that in. I don't know if I need a bottle or maybe I do. Alright, I'm trying. I need a funnel, but I don't have one. So I'm pouring it in this bottle. Well, I got 99.9% .9 in there. You know what? 
I'm gonna do right quick. Alright, I went over and put a little bit of this in that tomato plant there that I'm taking care of. I'm gonna get some good tomatoes off of that. I think I am. Anyway, I don't know how many eggshells that was. That weighs about a quarter of a pound. That stuff's heavy. That stuff is heavy. I wish it would have ground it finer than that, but I don't know. That other blender I had, boys, it would pulverize that down to a powder. But the thing about eggshells, you just can't lay big pieces of eggshell in your uh, around your plant or nothing. You can't expect good results from it like that. It has because the eggshell is hard and the calcium is in between them two hard layers. And uh, when you got it ground up real fine like this, you got more exposed edges and you get the benefit of the calcium that way. But with them whole eggs, you can do it, but it's not going to... No, it's not going to be good. Now, I know that to be a fact because I used to just lay the eggshells and, and I was coming up with a calcium deficiency. Um, but anyway, I got the calcium done. Now, what else? Am I going to do? I don't know if I need. I don't know where to set this. I don't know if you can see that little pitcher plant there. <laughs> Are you recording? Yeah, it's recording. But that's like a little bitty, tiny, miniature pitcher plant. It's got the little lid on it and everything. So I guess a gnat could get in there. But it, it's just like this, only this is big and that one's not. So that one's growing a pitcher and this one's growing a pitcher. And I don't know I don't know if, they can, if the same leaf can grow another picture or not. Um, but the new growth, and here, this one here right there, that's a picture, so that leaf's coming on. So I guess it has to grow new leaves to do that, I guess. Anyhow. If I could catch a fly, I'd drop it down in that thing. Um, these plants, I will be potting them next week. Put them over there. I'm checking these things daily. And you can see the humidity builds up in these things. And I see no signs of germination. And this is, what is, this is bell pepper. Lots of humidity. I may have one popping up. What is this? Uh, jalapenos. I like jalapenos. Um, this is squash. That one I'm gonna have to put in a bigger pot here in a couple of days. 
this one right here I don't understand why it's not coming up taller but it's because it's got a little true leaf starting on it that squash and this is going to go down here uh This is bell peppers. Am I sure? Bell. <laughs> I must have been having a bad day. I got that one spelled B-L-L -L instead of B-E-L. <laughs> and my peppers <laughs> looks like P-E-F-F-E. -F -F -E. <laughs> I must have been having a bad day that day. <laughs> okay. Uh, I wish I could find them dang tomato seeds, but this one here, I think, said bell pepper, too, and I don't know why I got, yeah, that's what it says, Bell peppers. I don't need all them pepper plants. Of course, I'll take them. Now I'm gonna set this out here where they'll get a little, little sun. Turn that around. These are cucumbers. These are cucumbers. I got two coming up in that. That's got a true leaf. This one's got a little true leaf start, and I'm gonna try to salvage that and put it in another another pot. This is a cucumber. It's coming along. Um, I think today I'm gonna again start some of the. <laughs> Uh, there's some plants in here that I need to pull up. And that's these, um, that's these camellias because I didn't do them right. Didn't do them right. I don't know if these pot of corpus is going to make it or not. I may have to uh, far gone. Too far gone. That's too far gone. Um, I don't see my knife. Alright. By wounding, that may not make it. By wounding, you go in here and you cut a sliver. off of that like that see how I did that and then I'm gonna put some more where is my rooting hormones I oh I know where it is put a little hormone on that Stick that in there. And that's what you should do. Um, this is a pit of sporing. 
and this is a pedosporin, but this is variegated and this is not. And I hope this breeds true to this stem there and makes stays up. Uh, okay. And by, by wounding these like this, it causes that plant to produce it causes it to produce uh, uh, hormones, rooting hormones. I don't know that to be a fact, but I've had several experts tell me that and the problem with these people just showing you this stuff they show you all the initial stuff but they don't show you the finished deal you know they just do like i'm doing here you show show you that but they never show you the finished deal and i don't like that I don't like that. All right. This may need shortening a little bit. And then I'm going to wound it like so. You don't have to go all the way around. Oh. Uh, and some of them are actually, some of the guys are actually going there and they trim these leaves like that. Oh. Uh, I don't know. But I'm going to trim this one. And actually, actually, I should do these pedosporins up there the same way. I might do that. All right, I did my eggshells. I got the video of that. Now, I'm showing about, okay. I'm going to do that. These. Are too long. These was in a bottle. Now the thing about. Keeping them in something like this. Tub over here where I put several in there. I can put about 20, 20 cuttings in there. And when it comes to changing the water, I can change the water uh, a lot faster and easier with them 17 or 20 plants or uh, cuttings than I can each individual bottle. That's, that's why I keep trying to do several at one time I don't want to miss any holes that'll go in there like that I should have clipped them leaves but I'll clip these And those professionals, I see them, they bunch, all the, they bunch all the leaves up like that. And then they snip them all at one, one whack, just like that. 
Now I got to go on this thing. And supposedly when you wound it like that, it starts producing its own hormones. I've been told I'm no expert. I'm kind of an expert on vegetables. Yeah. Oh. Um, Now, about Wednesday, I'll be changing all the water in this stuff. You know what? I'm going to get that one. Uh, got two in there. They're too long. Now, I'm gonna wound that thing like so. And then I'm gonna wound this one like so. Then, I'm gonna take off And I'm going to bunch all those leaves up like like so. Clip them. And this one, I'm going to take off a bunch of these leaves. Now, got one clip, one not clip, both wounded. Now, stick them in there. Go back over here. Do a clip there. And not clip there. Um, you know what I don't like about all this? I don't like the fact No, that one's no good. I don't like the fact Is that one good? That one looks good. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna cut that little nub off right there, and then I'm going to wound it. There we go. I guess, in a sense, you could say you're pulling a lot of trickery stuff on these plants when you're doing this. I mean, you trick that thing into it's got a wound and it needs to heal it and that's what causes it produces these hormones when you wound it like that as a matter of fact it started already you know just that quick um I could have more holes in this thing um, anyhow, that's it on the, uh, this one, something happened to this thing.
Um, gosh, I like doing this stuff, but the, what I was saying, it takes so long. It ain't really long. It takes a while to get the results, you know. It's just like these, these, these camellias, you know. I did these yesterday. And I'm thinking I'm going to take a bag, plastic bags. I, I, I wish I had something big enough to make humidity domes, but I don't. Um, and you can get big domes, but boy, they're expensive. I guess that's why I see a lot of growers using uh, uh, using uh, plastic bags and stuff, you know. And um, as a matter of fact, that one guy sent me an email talking about my bottles being in unsightly and all that stuff, and I should go buy the pots where it looks better and everything. Well. Right now, I'm not trying to impress anybody with my containers and stuff. I want to impress them with the plants when they do good. But yeah, he was talking. But it was oh, he was nasty. He was nasty. Well, buddy, you can take one of my bottles, and no, you can't have my bottles. I like my bottles. You take something else and shove it. <laughs> Anyhow. Alright. Down the ramp. Alright, Lisa. I'm going around here to this tree. Actually, that's supposed to be just a hedge. But if you let them go like that, that's what they'll turn into. Now there's the tree right there. There's the tree. Now I'm gonna go up close to it. And you can see, this is pretty much finished blooming now. The blooms are dying, but when it was blooming out, it was smelling so good. And let me get over here to this one here, and I can show you more. Here's some flowers that are still. There it is. Well, it's on a big limb. I can't. But I can still smell that one a little bit. But. It's supposed to be just a hedge type shrub, but if you let these things go, that's what they do. They turn into a dying tree. And look at this right here. <laughs> I like the way this limb is here. I hope you can see that. Oh. Um, way that thing's curved but anyway that's the tree and right over here I guess you can see my ball right over there on that part there And I got some plans for that one there. I want to shape that thing. So we'll see. Boy, I'd like to get a couple more off there, but boy, they're, they're hard to do anything with like that, for me anyway. But. I want to come out here and reap and get some, some of these smaller elder ears and pot them. There's several of them there. Um, but I'm afraid 
when these people get this house built and get moved in, some of them elevators on that end there, they may decide to take them up because it's on their property. But uh, the line runs just the other side of that tree. So I'm going to have to get my daughter out here one day. And we'll work on getting a bunch of these. That old man across the road there, he's 81 years old. He's got leukemia. And we're on pretty good friendly terms now. His name is Clyde. He's going to mow our yard once I get it picked up again. That boy keeps throwing stuff out here. Uh, and his property, it's an acre and a half. And I want you to look at that tree right there. That big oak. That thing's got to be 100 years old or more maybe. And boy, is it loaded with the Spanish moss. I, you know, it was something else I was thinking about. I don't know if it's feasible, but I was looking at what Spanish moss costs like at Hobby Lobby. Or you can get it on Amazon. That stuff's upwards of eight, eight to fourteen dollars for a bag, and it's not very big. And of course, the moss is cleaned, you know, but that's no biggie. Um, I could collect a lot of moss. Well, no. Dauber, you can't do it. That going that require I can make a pole to get it. They got the poles, a big old long pole, and it's got little prongs on it at the top, and you stick it up there in a clump of that moss and you twist it around and that snags the moss and you pull the moss down. Uh there's still people that do that and that i couldn't ever figure out what they were doing with it because nobody uses it in upholstery anymore it used to be common to use it in the upholstery for filling and stuff but that's what they're doing they're cleaning it and they're selling it they're selling it oh just a thought uh, <laughs> If I could walk and stand all right, I'd, 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 cause you could sign up with Amazon, you could sell it on Amazon. And I, I seen something a while ago on an ad for Amazon. Amazon is selling, they have about 25,000 sales a minute. That's right, 25,000 25, items sold a minute. And if that's, if that's individual sales or something, that's, that's 25,000 packages. Golly, man. I wonder, I'd like to talk to Jeff Bezo, is that his name? I would like to talk to him and say, hey, when you were sitting in your garage selling these used books, did you ever dream that, and I think he's supposed to be the richest man in the world now, did he ever dream that he it would get this big? And I don't know if he's exceptionally smart or if he just stumbled into it and it and it just blossomed. How you doing? I wish I could get out and ride a bicycle. I don't reckon I, I hadn't been on a bicycle in maybe 13 or 14 years. But yeah, I'd like to ask him that question. 
and and ask him did he ever think he could get something that big and when it started getting big what I'd like to know the procedure he went through to get that big 25,000 cells a minute I got Good Lord, can you think, uh, imagine the back room, or they call it, you know, the people that work behind the scenes, you know, taking, seeing that the, the orders go automatic. Somebody don't physically take your order, the, the orders are automatic, and then they, somewhere along the line they pick up on it. I don't know, that just boggles my mind. And, uh, of course, I was in a situation with, uh, my brother-in-law and three other guys. Uh, one of the guys was Clayton, the other guy was Marcus. And we used to go over there in their garage after we all fought regular job and was building furniture, upholstered furniture. And we had a guy selling it to stores and stuff. And everybody got tired of it. You know, wasn't making that much money or nothing. Everybody stopped doing it, stopped working, stopped showing up, except Clayton and Marcus. And now, Google Clayton Marcus Furniture. Look at that. I don't, I, they've got several factories now, big factories. And later on, I actually went to work for them for, I, I, I worked about a week. And I, I just, I was so disgusted with myself for not staying with it. I, I, and sometimes I'd see Clayton or I'd see Marcus, you know, but most time not. That's how the factories were big. And, uh, my gosh. Yeah, I made a mistake on that. <laughs> Do I have regrets? Heck yeah, I've got regrets. <laughs> I'll talk about my regrets one day. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right, guys. That's my story, and I'm sticking with it. And this time it's for real. This will wrap up the video. <sighs> Do I have regrets? <laughs> but you know what? Didn't nobody do any bad things to me on most of my life. I made the decisions and I did it all myself. I made my bed, and I'm having to sleep in it every day. <laughs> do I have regrets? A lot of people, they say, I don't have no regrets. I'd do it all the same again. Oh, buddy, I wouldn't. No, sir. I wouldn't. Uh, okay. See you in the next one. That's my story, and I'm sticking with it, and I got regrets. I think I'm going to get out here and water this thing good. This thing needs a good soaking. All right.